everybody, it's Miss Sarah from the Little Beast Lake Library and I am here to continue reading Escape from Mr. Lavincello's Library with you. Hopefully this section won't have any great Icelandic words that I get to figure out how to say. So here we go. We're on chapter 17. Excellent escape plan, Charles, said Mr. Lemoncello on the video screens. Thank you, sir, said Chiltington, smoothing out his khaki pants. And just so you know, I, I saw an ant crawling on the side of the seat. That, that's why I almost kicked it. How very thoughtful of you, Charles. Mr. Lemoncello, said Akimi. Yes, how come the sewer started smelling like a pine tree? Because I enjoy the odor of pine trees much more than the stench of horse poop. How about you? Definitely. Now then, will everyone else please join us upstairs in the Electronic Learning Center? I have an important, a very important announcement to make. Kyle heard feet clomping up the stairs and soon Andrew, Bridget, Yasmin, Sean, Haley, Rose, and Kayla hurried into the room. Are we all here? Said Mr. Lemoncello. Uh, everybody except Sierra Russell, said Kyle. Ah uh, yes, I saw her downstairs reading When You Reach Me by Rebecca Steed. We'll reach her later. It's nearly noon and I'm eager to move on to the next round of our competition. What competition? Said Yasmin Smith Snyder. The one we're about to begin. Sir, said Keegan, said Sean, said Sean Keegan, I have stuff to do today. That's fine, Sean. You are, of course, free to leave. If any of you, any of the rest of you do not wish to stay and play, kindly deposit your library cards in the discard pile. A tile in the floor popped open and an empty goldfish bowl atop an ornate column rose up about three feet. Just drop it in the bowl there, Sean. Attaboy, follow the flashing red arrows in the floor to the nearest exit, where you will receive a lovely parting gift along with my everlasting admiration for your essay writing abilities. Bright red arrows danced across the floor. Sean followed them. What happens if we decide to stay? asked Akimi. You'll be given the chance to play a brand new exciting game. Is there a prize for the winner? demanded Haley. Bailey. Oh, yes. Now Miguel shot up his hand. Mr. Lemoncello, what do we have to do to win? Simple. Find your way out of the library using only what's in the library. Awesome. Lame, muttered Kayla Corson. I'm out of here. She plunked her library card into the fishbowl and followed the blinking arrows out the door. Does anyone else need or want to leave? Sorry, I have soccer at two, said Rose Vermette. See you guys later. She dropped her card into the discard bowl. The instant she did, bells rang, confetti fell from the ceiling, and every electronic console in the game room started ding, ding, dinging. Congratulations, Rose, cried Mr. Lemoncello, who had put on a pointy hat. For sticking to your prior commitment, you will receive our very special prior commitment sticker prize, a complete set of Lemoncello sticker picture games, and a laptop computer to play them on. Enjoy. Charles Chiltington stepped a little closer to the security camera as Rose Vermet skipped out of the room. Sir, might we assume that the prize for winning your brand new game will be even better than a laptop computer? Yes, said Mr. Lemoncello, taking off his pointy hat. You may so assume. I'm in, said Chiltington. Me too, said Kyle. Me too, said added Akimi, Miguel, Andrew, Bridget, Yasmin, and Haley. Sierra Ru Russell rundered into the room. Her nose was buried so deep in her book she didn't even notice Mr. Lemoncello's gigantic face on all the video screens. Is something going on, she said mostly to her book pages. You bet, boomed Mr. Lemoncello. Sierra's head snapped up. Oh, hello, sir. Greeting, Sierra. Sorry to interrupt your reading. Just have a quick question. Will you be staying or leaving? Um, well, sir, I'd like to stay if that's okay. Okay, it's wondermas. Another word I just made up. Now then, to read you the rules of the game, because every game needs rules, here's our friend, your friend and mine, Dr. Yanina Zinchenko. The video screen switched to a close-up of the librarian with the red hair and glasses. Your exit from the library must be completed between noon today and noon tomorrow, said Dr. Zinchenko. Mr. Lemoncello's head popped into the corner of her screen. Tomorrow's my birthday, by the way. Mark your calendars. And he tucked back out of the frame. 
Our security guards will continue holding your cell phones, said Dr. Zinchenko. You may not use the library computers to contact anyone outside the building. You may, however, use them to conduct research. You may also request three different types of outside assistance. One, ask the expert, one, librarian consultation, and one, extreme challenge. Please be advised, the extreme challenges are, as the name implies, extremely difficult. If you pass the challenge, your reward will be great. However, if you fail, you will be eliminated from the competition. Kyle figured he'd avoid asking for one of those, unless he extremely needed to. To use any of these lifelines, Dr. Sinchenko continued, simply summon Mrs. Tobin. Chiltington raised his hand. Yes, Charles. Would you mind telling us what the prize will be for the winner? The video screen switched to an image of Mr. Lemoncello, who had done some sort of quick change. Now he was wearing sunglasses and had a silk ascot turned, tucked into his collar. He looked like a flashy Hollywood movie star from 1939. Fame and glory. The winner will become my new spokesperson and will star in all of my holiday promotions. Will be famous? Gushed Yasmin, fluffing up her hair and smiling at the security camera. Haley stepped in front of Yasmin. I've done some modeling work for Schumann, Sherman's Shoes in Old Town. Yasmin stepped in front of Haley. I was an extra in a hot dog commercial once. Well, I'm a cheerleader. Yasmin isn't. While the two girls continued primping and posing for the camera, Dr. Zinchenko came back on the screen to quickly rattle off some final words. Your library cards are the keys to everything you will need. The library staff is here to help you find whatever it is you're looking for. The way out is not the way you came in. You may not use any of the fire exits. If you do, an alarm will sound and you will be immediately eliminated from the game. For safety purposes, you will be under constant surveillance, video surveillance, and you will be recorded. In the unlikely event of an emergency, you will be evacuated from the building. Creating an incident that requires evacuation will not count as having discovered a way to the exit of the library. Any questions? Just one, said Andrew Pickleman, adjusting his goggle-sized glasses with his fingertip. When exactly will the game begin? Mr. Lemoncello's face reappeared on the screens. Good question, Andrew. Oh my, it's noon. How about let's say, I don't know, now. Chapter 18. The contestants raced down the stairs to the rotunda reading room. Haley saw, or Kyle saw Haley Daly dash down another set of steps into the basement to what the floor plan called the stacks. Miguel and Andrew, the two library experts, grabbed separate tables and started working the touchscreen computers. Bridget Wadge did the same thing. Charles Chiltington strolled out to the arched doorway and into the foyer with the fountain. Yasmin Smith Snyder was running around the circular room with, with her floor plan in front of her face, like someone frantically checking their text messages while racing around a crowded sidewalk. Sierra Russell found a comfy chair and sat down to finish her book. The girl definitely wasn't into the whole spirit of the game. So, Kyle, said Akimi, you want to form an alliance? What do you mean? It's what people do on reality shows like Survivor. We help each other until, you know, everyone else is eliminated and we have to stab each other in the back. Um, I don't remember hearing anything about illuminations. Oh, right. But hey, there's nothing in the rules that says we couldn't share the top prize. I just want to win. So, we're a team? Sure. Great, said Akimi. I nominate you to be the captain. All in favor, raise their hands. Kyle and Akimi both raised their hands. It's unanimous, said Akimi. Okay, let's go ask that antique librarian a question. What? I mean, what? We both get to ask one question, right? Right. Okay, here's mine. Hey, lady, how do we get out of here? And you think she'll tell you? No, not really. So what's your plan? Well, I was thinking. Suddenly, Yasmin shouted, I win! The rest of them stopped whatever they were doing. It's just like last night when Kyle found dessert in the most obvious place. To get out of the library, all we have to do is use one of the fire exits. Duh! She headed towards the hallway between the nook, Book Nook Cafe and the Community Meeting Room A. Kyle stood up. Uh, Yasmin, I think maybe you missed some of what Charles Chiltington dashed into the room and shouted. You're not going to win, Yasmin, not unless you beat me to the fire exit. He bolted toward the corridor. Yasmin bolted toward it, too. You guys, said Kyle. Kyle could see a red exit light glowing at the far end of the hallway. 
that Charles and Yasmin were sprinting down. Charles stumbled and fell. Yasmin kept running, harder, faster. She slammed into the exit bar on the metal door. Alarms sounded, flashing red lights twirled. Somewhere a tar tiger roared. Mr. Lemoncello's voice rang out in the overhead spe speakers. Sorry, Yasmin, that's where your sidewalk ends. You broke the rules. You are out of the game. Your library card will be placed in the discard bowl and you will be going home. As the fire door exit door slowly slung shut and Yasmin disappeared into the bright sunshine outside the library, Kyle checked out Charles Chiltington, who would have been sent home if he hadn't stumbled and reached the exit first. The guy was smirking. That was when it hit Kyle. Chiltington had faked Yasmin out. He knew she couldn't win by going out the fire exit, but he ran down the hall to fool her into thinking it was the right thing to do. Oh yeah, Chiltington was definitely in it to win it, no matter who he had to trample. Whistling casually, Charles strolled back to the lobby. What's Chiltington doing in the entrance hall, said Akimi. They told us the way out wasn't the way in. Before Kyle could answer, Andrew Pickleman started shouting at Miguel, who wandered over to Pickleman's table. Get away, you're trying to steal my idea. No, man, said Miguel, I just happened to see your screen, and I don't think that particular periodical... You know what, Miguel? I don't really care what you think. This isn't school. This is the public library, and you're not the boss in here, so just leave me alone. Miguel tossed up his hands. No problem, bro. I was just trying to help. Ha, you mean help me lose... Andrew stormed up the close to spiral staircase to the second floor and the Dewey Decimal Rooms. Miguel, lurking, looking sort of sad, headed up a special so separate spiral staircase. Bridget Wedge trailed after them. Want to follow those guys like Bridget did, whispered Akimi. I'll take Pickleman. You take Miguel. No thanks, said Kyle, looking up at the dome ceiling. I'm much more interested in the windows up there. Three stories above the rotunda floor, just below the Wonder Dome, there was a series of ten arch windows that sat between the rest recessed statue nooks. The windows acted like skylights at the base of the dome, allowing sunshine to flood into the room below. Do you think those windows are open? asked Akimi. Maybe, maybe not, but I've never got let a closed or locked window stand between me and winning a game. Just ask my dad. What? Not, never mind. Come on. Kyle trotted over to the cushy chair where Sierra Russell was peacefully reading her book. Um, excuse me, hate to interrupt. Sierra raised her hand. She had a very dreamy look in her eyes. I need a book. Really? said Sierra. What kind? Like the one you found up there. He gestured to the curving, curving bookcases climbing up the back half the rotunda. Fiction, said Sierra. Right, said Kyle. Love me some fiction. Well, what sort of story do you like? Something way up high, said Kyle. The higher the better. Really? Yeah. Well, that's an interesting way to put together a reading list, basing it on the bookcase elevation. I'd like something on the top shelf, maybe right under that hologram statue of the guy hanging out with the cat in a hat. That's Dr. Seuss, said Sierra. He wrote the cat in a hat. Sweet, said Kyle, but I just like how close he is to the window. All right, that's the end of the chapter. We'll pick up on 19 in our next video. Have a great day.